Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Besides heading into a greater depression, which is coming by the way, everything that's happening right now with government spending and such is non-sustainable. We see a big problem in our mortgage area too, owning a home, which of course is one of the biggest things that the American dream is owning your own home. Now, I have something huge to show you at the end of this video, and I'm not kidding, so stay through it, and I'm gonna go through some other data and show you what's happening in the direction we're heading. First, just to go through this, not that I like being on CNBC, mortgage rate races toward 8% after hitting a high not seen since 2000. And sure enough, from today's mortgage rates, we're looking at right now 7.74% at the filming of this video. And looking at Fred economic data, sure enough, here we are at 8% or close to it anyway. And we haven't seen that since around 2000 and we're heading in the same direction again. But again, there's huge things coming. I wanna show you something. I wanna show you this. For the S&P Case-Shiller U.S. National Home Price Index, uh, to go back into the 80s when the home price index, buying a house was so cheap, cheap, cheap. And it started increasing, increasing, increasing. And we look at around 2006, a huge peak uh, as far as the house pricing goes, and it dropped a little bit. And now look at it, it's going way up here. Obviously, house prices are way above and beyond what they should be priced and what people are paying is astronomical. And when we speak of astronomical, this article tells us the average monthly mortgage payment, and it's right here. This blows my mind. The average mortgage payment is $2,800 on a 30-year fixed mortgage and $3,700 on a 15-year fixed mortgage. And I don't know if you know it, but it's always recommended if you're getting a mortgage to go with a 15-year anyway. Um, even if you go with a 30-year, that's great. I mean, obviously, you're doing what you can to get into a home. Owning a home is a huge thing, especially with these interest rates. I mean, if we're to even talk about 8%, as far as that loan, that's actually pretty inexpensive compared to loans with other things like credit cards and often auto loans, et cetera. But think about this. When it comes to getting in your home for 15 years compared to 30 years, you save a lot of money. But if you go with a 30-year mortgage, nobody says you only have to make those monthly payments. You can actually double the amount each month or at least double the principal to pay off your loan much earlier. So even if you're in a 30-year loan right now, don't think you're stuck with 30 years. You can go much shorter by paying even more. But I want to look more at that 15-year mortgage with this. But before I jump into that, the U.S. Census, I'm going to scroll down. I want to show you something very interesting. And I want to look at the median household income, which we're actually looking at dollars in 2021. Obviously, it's gone up much since then. 69000 bucks. Getting $2,800 on a 30-year or $3,700 on a 15-year mortgage, that's the average on a salary of $69,000 terrible, I have to admit to you. Understand that when we calculate how much you should buy as far as a house goes, you're usually looking at about 25% of your income. And that 25% is based on that 15-year mortgage, not the 30. So if we're looking at the average mortgage payment of $2,800 on a 30 or $3,700 on a 15-year mortgage, think about it this way. The $3,700 15-year mortgage is going to make it so you should be making $15,000 a month. Do you make that much? Or if we're looking at the 30 year, now we're looking at a mortgage payment of $2,800. 25% of that, we're looking at having an income of $11,000 a month. Do you make that much? I would actually argue that the majority of the population in the United States doesn't even come close to that, considering they said the median income is only $69,000. So why is it Americans are buying such expensive homes when their household income is so low? And I mean, your first thought might be, well, no, that's not how it works because understand there's two incomes in a house. No, this is talking about the household income, not one person's income. So we're seeing ourselves right in that same picture again in which now the housing bubble, people are trying to buy homes way more than they should. The banks were trying to stall this out and make that shit so it wouldn't happen. But here we are again in that same predicament and people find themselves strapped and they're in big trouble. And now because of this, a lot of people are either foreclosing or trying to sell their homes very quickly. And that's getting into what I'm talking about in the last part of this video, the very dangerous situation we're in. And this is the first part of the problem, although this is not the big part I'm gonna show you in a minute. We're looking at foreclosures. 2008, 2009, huge foreclosures. And the foreclosure rates have actually gone down quite a bit because the banks were trying to curb how much you could borrow for a house. But now it's, if you look at the curve, it's going right back up again as far as foreclosures are increasing. But people are getting wise instead of foreclosure. Now, instead, we're looking at selling the houses. And the number of houses sold for cash in the United States up to 2022. In the 80s, sure, people sold their house for cash because it was a smart investment. And it dropped down and down as people had less and less money. But look, the amount of people selling their houses for cash is going way up, huge. 
And is that great? Wow. So, no, it's not great at all because it's not the average mom and dad or you know somebody starting a family or wanting your own house buying cash. No, it's corporations. We've mentioned this in the past. Corporations are gobbling up these houses by the tens of thousands, turning them into rental units. Instead of seeing communism, where in communism, people can't own their own personal property. In socialism, you can, by the way. Either the government still controls it. Government control is what this is all about, by the way. You'll, you'll see in a minute. But in communism, you can't own a property. In America, we really are not communist, obviously, even though we may be heading in that direction or in the direction of socialism. But corporations are taking over instead. Instead of seeing the government trying to control people, which is happening too, the corporations are really catching on saying, you know what, we'll just buy all these houses and then turn them on as rental. And we are literally heading in a direction in which people will not be owning their home anymore, but instead will be renting their home. What is going to get the people out of their houses, by the way? The first one is this economy. Horrible, right? It's terrible. All the stuff people can't afford their houses, absolutely awful. But there's more to it than that. Look at this. Look at this, an insurance exodus. While natural disasters surge across the US, not so many of them are natural, by the way. Insurance companies are pulling out of troublesome states, leaving Americans with less choice and support. Some insurers are actually not providing homeowners insurance at all. And if they do, the premiums are going through the roof. And for example, we're not limited to this, AAA backs off offering home car insurance to Florida residents. And ultimately, long story short, we are being strong-armed. Strong-armed into getting away from that part of the American dream of having your own home, having your own property, as corporations are taking over. And of course, the corporate other corporations saying, well, what are you going to do? We're not going to insure you. They're making it more and more difficult, if not impossible, to get into homes. This is something that we, we have to fight against this. We have to try to get into homes. That is, it's the last ounce of being truly independent. But I will tell you this, though. Even if you get into your home, you're now going to be strong learned by the government as far as paying taxes. Because understand this, if you own your home, scot-free, I paid it all off, that's great. But you still owe taxes on your home, you actually don't own your home. You don't own your land or property. And you might think, oh yeah, I just had to pay taxes. I still own my home. Do you? I dare you in that case to stop paying your taxes and see what happens. We are basically just renting from the government. This is the government's property and we're giving them a little bit each month to be able to live here. What happened to the American dream? With these taxes on here, I kind of even question it happened in the first place. But being debt-free, this is your prepper's advice, by the way, being debt-free and making it so literally you have no debt at all and having money set aside for taxes too, it's the only way to get past this because they want nothing less than taking every one of our homes away from us and turning this into a home-owning, at least that part of it, communist state in which the corporations own it, and you will own nothing. Granted, you'll be happy. That's what they claim anyway. You'll own nothing and be happy. That's not the case at all. We have to fight what we can. Put in the comments below your thoughts on this. I'd like to see it. And thanks for watching.